like we were saying, we're musicians, so we're going to roll with it. <laughs> Improv. Thank you, everyone who's watching and listening, whatever platform you're on. Uh, the gentleman I'm speaking with uh, is somebody I've been following for several years. Um, first time we met, as a matter of fact, was it, I can't remember the name of the place, but uh, Water Street Music Hall, maybe, Rochester. I was working with the Malcolm Moore Band. And we got to open for Stickmen, and what a thrill that was. Um, so anyways, my guest is uh, very well known for his work with Stickmen. He's had uh, several solo projects too, which I'd love to talk about. And I just found out recently, you are a psychologist. And we're going to talk yeah. about this today. So I uh, just want to welcome a uh, special guest, somebody who's influenced me a lot musically, Marcus Reuter. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. How are you, man? Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing very well, uh, especially because I had a chance to talk to somebody uh, who's um, not my next door uh, neighbor. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm used to, I, I'm used to traveling a lot, as you know, and, yeah. uh, and, and having like all sorts of like different impressions and uh, influences like every day. And, and now like being in this situation of being home and just having the same routine, uh, which it just happens if you're in one place. Right. Like, it does. And, uh, and um, but I have to say, it's kind of funny. I, I, I've started to realize that I'm actually pretty good at, um, at having routines, <laughs> at being mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. this this groundhog day uh um, effect that people talk about i quite li i quite like it because it 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 really fits to my my way of working because i i like to practice you know i like to kind of uh, have my practice routines i you know i'm i'm producing music all the time and this is this really really works very well in this <laughs> in this climate i have to say um that's good i'm glad um you know, it's funny. I, I have traveled a lot the past few years teaching the the Parkinson's course that I teach mm -hmm. all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but man, you put on some serious miles. You and Stickman and and uh, Leonardo, man, you guys are all over the place, and I it's really cool. It's cool to watch. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's some it's really it's really unique a unique. Um, skill set and a unique um set of experiences you you make and i i think it's really um it's difficult to to, to explain to people who never tra travel you know it's, yes mm -hmm. it's it's kind of um because you're basically um uh, not dealing anymore with with being tied to a uh, a social class or to a certain uh, to, to certain social standing that people have because you meet you know as a musician you meet obviously you meet other musicians who are stars or you meet the the stage hand uh, you meet all sorts of of people who you kind of like meet on 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 your level on like eye to eye and and like very personal and and having this experience in like meeting people from so many different cultural contexts also yeah. is kind of something that, that I don't think a lot of people really have. Like not, not even like business, you know, you know, business people who travel a lot, they usually um, only deal with people that are kind of like in their yes. compartment, you know, some, somehow. And with music, with music, it's kind of, it's, it's very wide because there's like, there's, there's the audience, there are the workers, there are the other musicians, and, and there are students, and blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it is interesting. And in, in my travels, they have not been musical related. Um, yet, at the same time, uh, the cultural experience is interesting. I, I really enjoy that. Yeah. Um, so I work with people with Parkinson's all over the world. Mm -hmm. So I see people in Ireland and Italy and Spain and England and France and Argentina yeah. and Mexico and Singapore and they have Parkinson's and uh, 
and then the trainers and the physios and the OTs come in and all of us get to learn from each other, which is really, really interesting. We learn about their experiences. We learn about maybe the work that they do or did. And it's, yeah. it's actually very enriching. You know what, I, I wanted to pick your brains anyway there because one of my best students, he actually has Parkinson's. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry it's to hear that. Interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting because uh, obviously I know about the disease uh, because I, I heard about it also in my studies like already 30 years ago almost. So, um, but I've never really had contact with uh, somebody who was suffering from it. And um, so teaching, teaching um, touch guitar to somebody with Parkinson's is, uh, is incredible. It's, it's such an incredible experience to, um, to, to kind of like get some insight. I mean, you have, I, I don't have any insight, I'm not saying it, but just this little bit of insight I have into the nature of that disease. It's, it's very, very uh, eye-opening in a way. Well, it's interesting because well, you know, there's an old saying, and I, I don't know who said it. it. might have been Michael J. Fox. Um, mm -hmm. you, if you met a person with Parkinson's, you met a person with Parkinson's. And what, he, what is meant by that is uh, each person is uniquely affected in their own ways. Um, there are many commonalities between large groups of people with Parkinson's. For example, uh, may, maybe a tremor. Yeah. But maybe not. Not everyone gets a tremor. Some live with for Parkinson's with decades and never get a tremor. However, mm -hmm. um, I just recorded more of a fundraiser type of thing, a CD with uh, uh, a friend, uh, somebody who got to know really well, starting about 12 years, Jimmy Haslip. You probably know Jimmy or of Jimmy. Uh, yeah, yeah. You were the, yeah, he's just such a beautiful guy. And a guitar player on the CD, this is actually kind of how it got started, is Jeff Richman. Jeff mm -hmm. lives with Parkinson's. Uh -huh. um, very minimal tremors, and he's still playing great. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have, and we can talk about this um, on or off camera, but for your student, here's, here's what I'll offer. Um, I, I'll send this to you, to your email. It's an access code to get into this. Um, it's an uh, online institute that I have. It's not the greatest looking thing, but there's a ton of information. Mm -hmm. And it really te teaches about the disease in depth, very, very in depth, and disease management strategies. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. does your student have a tremor? Yes. So there might be something that he can do to help diminish that tremor before he plays guitar or touch guitar or anything and so um i'll send it to you it's basically it's vibration hold on to a vibrant vibrating object for five or ten minutes and it might diminish the tremors completely temporarily the, the interesting thing is like when he plays the tremor at least it looks like it stops it's it's that special kind of focus that somehow it, it's even as as if there's like an extra set of uh of nervous yeah. connections that kind of make this uh, work. It's interesting, or it's it's a different part of the brain that if that gets engaged, um, I don't know if that's what you experience or no. You know, I don't know what's going on, but I know that. Um, in fact, I was going to ask you that when he plays, does do his symptoms diminish? Because many times, when somebody is engaged in something that they feel is or is therapeutic to them. Mm -hmm. Could be music, playing mm -hmm. an instrument. Um, there's a gentleman I met in England who does pottery. And mm -hmm. I went with him to where he spins down the clay. And when he's spinning, there's no tremor. His symptoms are they're gone. Because there, there is something happening in here, and it has to do with the best I can say is there's something going on in the brain that creates a extra electrical uh, firing, uh, synaptic firing patterns that yeah. somehow they, they, it, it helps to diminish uh, symptoms. So it's, yeah, so actually that's really good. If he's, to, if he's finding this to be therapeutic, then that's really good. 
Mm-hmm. Awesome, man. Jeez. Yeah. I'll still send you that thing, though, just so you can That's finish the image. Yeah. So, you know, we were uh, messaging back and forth a bit here the past week or two, and you mentioned how the uh, psychology and music are closely tied together for you. Yeah. I would love to, i just love to uh, have you expound upon that and uh, enlighten us. And... I mean, I, the thing is that it's, it's 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 a um, topic that I can kind of like, you know, we not improvise, right? Mm-hmm. So yes. so if I if I need to talk about the relate because it's such a complex and such such really uh, deeply intertwined for me, it's really uh, difficult to just say what that is. But like there there are the like the perspective if you know of of. What's your calling, for example? Like when I ask myself, what's my calling? And I, I, I kind, of, kind of analyze what I do in this world somehow or what, what I do does. That's kind of like the way that I look at it. I've come to the conclusion that there, there's more of a healer or healing aspect to what I do uh, than music as music like because it's it's really funny because i never i never really wanted to perform or play music myself initially mm-hmm. it was i was never my interest in, interestingly enough i you know i gotten there by by accident in a way yeah but mm-hmm. but just just to see like what what does my music do and um you know that nowadays like numbers like sales and like if you're like rich or not or famous or not doesn't really you cannot really you cannot really quantify that anymore um really that's what i thought but um when when the 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 coronavirus thing started and we had the japanese um tour canceled and I think we're going to talk more about that later yeah. but uh, when I got home I, I had this idea to start a GoFundMe campaign right away because I knew that I was going to lose at least three months and now it turns out it's going to be probably the whole year uh, of, of income and yeah. it was amazing and within 24 hours my friends they raised 12,000 euros for me it's Beautiful. incredible oh, that's and so, so there, there I was seeing so there's a connection and like people Kind of get something from me that I cannot, I, I cannot really see that if I look at the numbers of my of the sales, mm-hmm. because there were there were more donations than and numbers than sales of, of of CDs that I make. Sure. Yeah. So, so you see, it was it was kind of interesting. And so the point, like with like what I mean, like with psychology or or being a, being kind of like a healer in this world, means there's something that I seem to give to people. Uh, where um, only if I if I allow myself to ask, in a way, mm-hmm. they they can actually re- give me something in return. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that this this whole idea that that selling music uh, um, somehow uh, is is kind of a a valid or a working uh, mediator of into human exchange you know it's 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 wrong it just doesn't doesn't work that way and that's that's where i see the psychology part in in that that music uh well in my case music is this is this uh um i don't know what to say it's it's a thing yeah let's just call it a thing that i can, can put into the world that does me something good in return if i allow the feedback loop or the feedback to actually get back to me and get back into me. And that's something that I, that I've learned in the past 10 years since I started playing uh, like m- bigger shows with uh, Stickman and the Crimson project was very important in that regard for me, because um, I remember um, at the end of the show, when, when we got the applause and, you know, standing ovations and, and I saw like Adrian blue, he was there and he was like, like shaking of excitement, you know, he really like, and I, I, I was at the beginning, I was so cool. Like I couldn't really use the energy that came back from the audience. I couldn't really, I didn't have, the, the gates were closed on my end. 
right. to, to actually take that energy back in. And so in that, in that way, music also taught me a lot about myself and helped me to open up um, to other people. And, and um, so, so for me, just, just on that level, um, music and my, pers- my psychology is, like, is very, very much intertwined. Mm-hmm. But but that that is just on this on this level, and there's obviously my compositions and stuff, which which are kind of based on on uh, my knowledge about psychology, you know. Really interesting. Yeah. Really interesting. Um, oh, I could ask a hundred questions right now. I'll tell you what. Let's talk about this because mm-hmm. this release, yes, is something I absolutely love. It is the music mm-hmm. of our times. Yes. So for people listening, if you can't, if you're not watching, it's called Music of Our Times with Gary Husband and Marcus. Um, you know, I've been listening to this over and over and over and over and over again. It's not very often that I listen to music and feel a connection like like this especially in uh in that i feel completely relaxed um Mm -hmm. almost Mm -hmm. picture and i hope you'll take this as a compliment because i mean it very much as a compliment is if 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 i was between this galaxy and another and it felt and sounded a certain way that's how i would want it to sound on my way to the next galaxy (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. yeah No, that's certainly a good thing. Because it's, oh. it's, uh, uh, I absolutely love it. And of course, Gary, you know, I mean, what can I say about that guy? You know, such a, first of all, a great human being. And uh, what a big heart and the feeling, you know, the two of you together too, especially just bringing this. You can feel the feeling in the music. Well, I can, yeah. Anyways, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 super interesting because one one of the um, challenges that I'm I'm usually kind of facing in in um, presenting myself, let's say, um, uh, is that that people really sometimes have no idea what I actually do, and <laughs> so so. Um, so my role on this, in this, uh, you know, the production of that album and the recording of that album, I think is much, it, it's, it's a much wider role than just being a player. And it's sure. kind of like the same for Gary, obviously. But in this constellation, um, I, had, I had spoken with Gary before um, quite a few times, and, and he always, he had made this impression on me that, that there was something that he needed to say, but he didn't have the, the right framework for that. Mm-hmm. And so, so this is just something that I, I th- this was like more of an unconscious thing for myself to kind of like, kind of connect with him on that level and, and realizing, okay, there is, there is something in him that wants to get out. And, and so e- even though I didn't, I didn't really say that to myself, it wasn't a thought, Mm-hmm. But the the way the, when we entered the studio, actually, this this is kind of an interesting story. I think the session that eventually led that became the album was on a on a Tuesday, but we had already booked a, a different studio on the Monday. And when we get to the, got to that studio, it was like like the first two seconds in that in that room, I knew we're not going to record here. Mm-hmm. And so we, we maybe spent a minute there and left and told them uh, that we wouldn't wouldn't do that. And actually. I think we kind of insulted uh, the owners, which wasn't our intention. Ooh, was it, it an energy went, thing or just like a feeling? Well, it was, well, it was also, it, first of all, it wasn't technically uh, equipped for what we needed, but also, but, but also also an energy thing, yes. Mm-hmm. So but there you see, so there was like something in a, in a way, there already was some sort of vision for what was needed even before we started playing together. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And that, constellation and and so um when we came to the to this um other studio on the on the tuesday and it was very very nice people there really beautiful studio like super high standard and and a beautiful piano and i set up my laptop and so the the strategy that i used there 
which um, I also say how you can actually hear that on the recording, was to, to use the sound check to set the mood for the recording. Oh. So, so what I did, I captured Gary's playing but with my live, live sampling setup. So, so two microphones that were uh, above his piano were fed directly into my audio interface and my okay. guitar was fed into my audio interface. So I could, I could capture whatever he was playing and, and manipulate that in real time. I had a, like a small controller that I could, could use mm -hmm. to do that. And um, so basically the sound check uh, gave me an opportunity to set the mood for the session. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was kind of like, in a way, sometimes I feel that this kind of, when I do something like that, it can be quite intrusive and also a little bit uh, patronizing to uh, follow uh, fellow musicians. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. like I, 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 I certainly have the, uh, the tools to be a strong leader, let's say, mm -hmm. um, which sometimes I don't, I feel bad when I, when I do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in this particular situation, it felt like I could tell like, like when Gary heard what came back from my laptop, from what he, what he had played, it was like morphed into something completely different. And I could see his eyes sparkle. And, uh, and yeah, and sure. And, and he gave me like a, like a nod and he has this, this way of speaking with his, with his, uh, with his face. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it was just wonderful. And then we didn't, we didn't have to, there was actually like a wall between us also. There were like windows, but I never looked up really. Uh -huh. And um, so the first, the, the, um, the order of the pieces on the album are just the, the order that they were recorded in. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So in the first piece, if you pay close attention, the, the motif um, that starts this, the piece and that repeats throughout the, the piece is one of these rec recordings I made during the sound check. It's actually, it's not, and people were in the room. And you can hear the people pacing pacing about in the room and you can hear that and you can hear the the the, the wood the sound of the wood going and so that's uh, what that is well i is. wondered i'm thinking <laughs> this is whatever it is sounds really cool and the placement of it is just organically perfect um, yes, yes that explains a lot right there yeah that's really yeah. really interesting and so and so you see that's that's how how the session then developed so there, that was the first piece we recorded and between the takes, we um, we would say um, something like, "Okay, no, let's play another free piece," or "Oh, let's use this tale," or you know, we were doing that. And then we we're like, there were a couple of pieces where we actually had a metronome also, mm -hmm. where we were playing to a metronome. And um, of those pieces that we uh, used the metronome on, only the last piece on the on the record is is one that uses the metronome. The others we actually didn't use. There were like two or three uh, more takes or performances that were not, are not on the album. Okay. Um, so, so, and that was, that was all we, we kind of had, you know, that it, there was just no, no planning. And we just, we just, we just started playing. And where were you for this? Was this England, Germany? No, no, it was Tokyo. To oh, okay. Tokyo. Oh, yeah, this, it was, that was yeah, recently. Because, yeah. Yeah, it was it was right after the the Stigman tour got cancelled, and okay. that's why why Gary and I were still in Tokyo, um, and uh, Pat oh, Tony okay. and our engineer Robert they had already gone back to to the U.S. and um, Gary and, and obviously Leonardo and I we like we we always we like to dream, you know, like we we like to 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 have discussions and dream openly and yeah so we said okay like we're here in tokyo uh, in japan and we need to make something happen you know we don't want to um let this trip be in vain and um and then we decide okay let's try to find a studio um, oh uh, that's great yeah, so that was re very recently then uh yeah yeah and the the record the record i i mixed the record i produced the record right after i returned home Mm -hmm. So um, the record was was done like with, within a week, it was completed within a week, right? And uh, Leonardo put it out right away. Yeah, wow, it was that's maybe really like cool. a like like a five week uh, turnover. Okay, because I remember following uh, some of the Facebook postings from Leonardo, you uh, uh, Gary, 
Um, I think maybe even Tony Levin's page had a, something about a cancellation of the tour. Yes. And um, yeah, that's really interesting. Wow. So interesting. So, well, you know, the, the audio on this, I mean, the, the quality of the production the sound mm -hmm. is just so, so nice. So full, so, but, but not produced. And if you know what I mean, it sounds absolutely amazing. I, when I think of production, sometimes I think of, um, I don't know how to even describe it, compressing sounds and they don't really sound the way they did when you actually did it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. A lot of the more popular music, maybe um, at least back a ways a few generations ago, but, but this one here, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean it's 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 basically because uh, the initial the initial quality of the recordings uh, is so great. I didn't really have to produce much. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you need to know is there was no reverb, for example, on those recordings. So so the the spaciousness that you're hearing that was something that was added later. That's yeah? you know what that's a perfect word. Then that's what I was trying to describe. Yes, spacious, extremely, really yeah. nice. And, and and it's yeah i mean the, really the the there's you know recording and there, there are so many people that uh, try to teach you how to record and how to mix and how to blah 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 and everything is kind of like like almost like a like a secret art um it's not <laughs> it's yeah. not it's not it's just it, you just need to learn to listen that's really what it's about like being a musician being a record producer being a mix engineer um all you need to do is listen and if you if you know how to listen then obviously they kind of be like you need to do what the tools do but then there's there's no no secret ingredient really it's just it's just listen and uh and adjust a little bit you know and if the recording is great and and uh, yeah the, the recordings were perfect and the the piano was uh very well tuned, which is also another issue that sometimes uh, you can run into if you're a, a piano player. Yeah, sure. Yeah? Yeah. But it was it was really um, just a perfect uh, environment, and and so I didn't really have to do much. And if there was nothing added um, to the to the session, you know, nothing added, but maybe I took a couple things away. Okay. Yeah, that that's that's all that was done to that, and. And yeah, I'm, it just it just um, came out beautifully. It's um, um, too totally organically, and um, yeah, I mean, what can I say? It's... Well, you know, I, I can I can feel that in it and in, in the music when I when I listen, I feel the organic. I just feel like this was completely one hundred percent just them doing what they do and doing it together and. And uh, it was a really nice chemistry between the two of you. A real yes, nice chemistry and energy, a great blend. Yeah, and somehow we managed we managed not to actually uh, follow anybody's expectations. You know, which is, um, and I have to say, like for me, because I've never really been successful in a bigger way. Right? It's it's for me, it's easy. Uh, for me, it's easy to do uh, wacky stuff say for for gary it's 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 something else if if people have a certain image of you and you know you need to kind of deliver your chops let's say and mm -hmm. and 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 so most of the most of the gigs that you get as a professional musicians are kind of the ones where you where you show uh where you show your chops uh and and that's what i meant that that gary seemed so uh so liberated and, yeah and, and and it's just it's just wonderful and and here again you see obviously i'm not I, I i'm not gary's therapist and i don't want to be his therapist he's my friend yeah however in a musical situation like this like what i can do i can i can provide the space for for in this case for gary to be who he is right right and 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 that, that's 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 like another another way of 
like understanding that that this 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 act of making music is more than just creating the recording it's it's like this communal event you know where you where you just allow things to happen where where um judgment uh, gets suspended for a while you know you know I, I i like how you describe that i think that um you know my career as a musician for 30 something years was on a you know just more of a regional level here working and you know paying bills i mean so you play what you have to in my case to play pay bills whether it's boogie yogi or you know elvis <laughs> <laughs> but um you know no offense to anyone but that wasn't really my thing i didn't enjoy it at all but when i got into what i do now i've i've been able to step back and uh kind of reassess the whole situation if i was to make music again i know that i have i have things to say too musically i'm not sure exactly what but to be able to capture what you captured in this um, music of our times, it captured so well, like you had a statement to make or you had an intention. Let's say you had an intention behind it of maybe not even know where it would go, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if it's an improv, but it came out. Capturing that is, I think, really difficult for uh, most people, but I would want to do what you did. <laughs> because and if only two people listen that's fine i don't really care i mean i hope it helps them and they like it and i'm probably a few years off from it but listening to you describe this though i'm a little bit going on a tangent but i know where i'm coming back to is the intention you had getting together and and how you did this that's uh s seldom done these days and Bravo to you for getting it out there and Leonardo and Gary, because it's beautiful stuff. I've learned a lot. This will help me to move forward in the future and bridging my uh, current gig with music. This is another thing I'd love to ask you about. I think music is so therapeutic in so many ways. For me, it's a different Indeed. therapy. I need different music to therapy me, you know. You know, like, I think, you, you you were born in the U.S., right? You're you're American. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 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 you should shouldn't forget that there are certain um, cultural um, uh, big differences between people from uh, Europe and a person from North America, mm -hmm. and and the. Um, the focus, the focus is very different. Like where the competitiveness is something that is like more uh, pronounced uh, in the U.S. because you're kind of like, um, let's say, the system kind of makes you uh, have. That's what, what it looks like. Like it tries to tell you that you're like super, re you're responsible for your own life so you kind of need to you need to fight in a way you're you're being told that you need to fight in order to to get somewhere to mm -hmm. be someone mm -hmm. and and i'm just i'm just saying this so so just to 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 show that i i have kind of sort of like an advantage as an artist let's say coming from europe because i've grown up with this with a with a safety net let's say um, cultural safety net, um, not not necessarily also social, but also socially. But I mean, like there, there's like this cultural safety net, where um, where I I had I had the opportunity to do the things that I want to do, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or the things that I can do is what I should say. Really, it's not what I wanted to do. It's it's the things that I can contribute that I contributed right yeah. yeah and so and so the uh uh because you you said that you would like to be able to do what i do um it, and and i think it's it's just coming from a from a from a completely different cultural background you cannot we cannot really compare this you know yeah but, well just to qualify that is when i 
what I mean by what I said, and I think you you already know this, but just to make sure is I have something to say. I'm not even sure what it is yet, but when, when I get it there, it's going to sound whoever it sounds. And yeah. I hope that I can capture it. Mm-hmm. But I don't know anything about music theory anymore. I'm, I'm as I say, I'm just a drummer <laughs> who needs to study some theory and needs to mess around with the piano I have downstairs. And, uh, but also find a person or two who uh, resonates and can help me get this out. But yeah, I mean, it would be uniquely mine, right? Because I'm me. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I, I haven't, I'm not there yet, but I will be at some point. Like, but it, at the same I, time, I love what you did. I love how you put this out there and captured it so eloquently. So nice. You know, it's 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 what I'm what I I think what I'm trying to say is if you're if you're looking, uh, when we're looking at teachers in music or in you know like there the music teacher is usually about the content of what you do, how to play music, what kind right. you know, mm-hmm. it's about the execution. But really, what what in uh, today's world would be really needed is somebody who teaches the art of music uh, so which is a different which is a different level and that really in the art in the arts world that is that is a common thing like yeah. your arts teacher the arts teacher does not require you to work within a certain style or or the yeah. arts teacher does not tell you what to do but the arts teacher would kind of critique your work sure right? and 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 that is that is just like a completely different approach and 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 um i i've, I've started to to realize that i'm uh, I'm one of the, I don't know, of really few, but of the few that I know who work on the level of the arts teacher mm-hmm. in music. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's also what I, what I can hear from what you are saying, that that's really, you don't need, I, wouldn't, I would say you don't need to learn music theory. That's, that's, that's kind of, that's, the wrong, that's about the content. What you need is kind of like uh, to, to, to somebody help you shape the overall process and just go for it and make your piece of art. Right. And that's, that's a piece of, that's, that's going to be a piece of music. Yeah. You know? And obviously maybe yeah. sometimes you use music theory as a, as a tool mm-hmm. to learn to be free or whatever, you know, there, there, there are ways to do this, but a- anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm wishing you all the best. And I, I really uh-huh. hope that the dream comes true and that you will, <laughs> that you will do this. Well. Yeah, actually, I didn't even mean to be really talking about me during this, because our our conversation is organically flowing. But this has been, though, this this CD you just put out, though, is highly influential to me in many ways. And now after talking with you, it's even more so because I can start to process, you know, where you were coming from. Mm -hmm. It just unfolded in such a beautiful way. That's the best way, man. I, I just love that. You, you said that you have something to say and that it will find the form. Uh, I have to tell you, I have nothing to say. And I've never had anything to say in music. Really, I never had anything to say. That's also why, why I, I don't play. I hate playing. Like whenever somebody asks me to just play for them, I don't do it. I on, only do it in a professional context where I'm forced to do it because somebody pays me. <laughs> as a matter of fact it's true it's true i kind of i i don't i don't want to perform in front of people it's not what i do it's just um you know it's it's kind of interesting and it, i mean talking about this record music of our times okay uh which is moon june 101 and moon june 100 was also a record of mine called truce oh yes with, yes yes with a, with, with a rock trio and or like jazz rock trio, you could say. Yes. Um, again, something completely different. And like you could say, yeah, Mar- Marcus had something else to say then. No, I didn't have anything to say. It was just just that we were around in the studio, got together, and we just played. And there was there was no there was no aim, there was no um, no thought process, and um, that's that's kind of the way. Uh, it goes nowadays with all that, um, all that background of music history that we have, you know, yeah. like especially, especially the last 50, 60 years, 
um, they have been hugely exploratory uh, and and have brought so many uh, opened so many doors that people still need to pass through somehow. Yeah. And and I think that's kind of like what I do. You know, I, I kind of see my work as 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 kind of like crossing a bridge from from the past to the future somehow, and that is now. Mm-hmm. You know, that is that is kind of like how I see my work, and I don't have anything to say. And I don't think I will ever have anything to say other than in this conversation with you. Well, I'm, I'm <laughs> laughing only because it's not what you say, but how you say it. It's just, it's, it's great. Actually, it's great. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I feel I have something to say. I'm just not sure what it is yet. And I, I'll know it when I hear it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I like that idea, though. It's interesting because I, I'm a very, first of all, I don't read like books Mm -hmm. well i just picked up this book here this oliver sacks yeah musicophilia another one which is not recommended not recommended beautiful book Uh, this this one here is uh it's hard to read it's very interesting but i'm looking at reading and learning on that more from the aspect of uh, because both of them one is a neuroscientist and then oliver was a neurologist yeah how can i implement music more effectively with my clients to make a bigger difference in their quality of life. Uh, it, you know, what music, you know, they, they didn't, I'm not going to play them something they don't like, but what mm-hmm. do they like and how can we learn more about things they might enjoy listening to that can help them to move better? Because it's really am- amazing what happens you take a person with Parkinson's who has an asymmetrical stride, so more of a shuffly step mm-hmm. instead of an even step, it's, uh, and then, you know, yeah. a shuffle, then they tend to even out when they're going with an even rhythm. Uh, mm-hmm. So I don't play shuffles in my workouts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no shuffles. But something with a nice, um, this is like a target for them. Let's mm-hmm. step to the beat because that actually helps improve movement, reduce fall risk. But yes. these books here are very interesting. Um, I, do, I really do go off on tangents, but I'm coming back. I'm learning how to come back these days, which is I'm a slow reader. And music theory was so hard for me in college. It was just horrible. I mean, mm-hmm. I got A's, but it's because I wouldn't. I, I needed to. I just needed to have that feeling of, oh, I did well, even though I didn't really do well okay um so i think for me i'm going to have to back in and go backwards (laughs) hear it and then figure out how to play it because i had to learn any i didn't even know if it's relevant to learn anything specific you know theory wise yeah um i'm curious to know so before you were playing with stickmen um I'm going to go a little bit backwards in time, if you don't mind. I'm just curious, did you ever work as a psychologist as far as doing uh, working with people in therapy? Um, well, you know, I, I, I'm a psychologist in the, in the more general sense. I, I studied uh, in the, the, like the old German system, which is um, like the title I have is Diplom Psychologe. And okay. it's, it's nowadays, it's a different system. Now it's like the bachelor and master's system here as well. So I studied still, still the old system that was 100 years old or something. And, and it, was, it, was, um, it was the science of psychology. Okay. So it wasn't focused on you know, therapy or like clinical psychology was just, was just one small part of that. Right. And even though I, I, I had like some sort of talent, I never... Uh, actively preserved, uh, you know, went in, in that direction, really. I was more interested in the research part of it. I see. And my thesis was a research thesis. Yeah. Oh. Um, uh, I, I actually did in my, in my, in my thesis, for my thesis. But anyway, so, oh. um, so after, after my studies, I, um, I was uh, working as a, as a, as a, as a trainer from, for, for managers for about one and a half years. Um, and I, I started a small business, uh, which was called Open the Door, um, with 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 one of my um, psychology colleagues. And mm-hmm. um, and then suddenly my uh, my life took a turn um, because I had met um, 
uh, Bernard Wistheinrich, who's a musician that I played with in a, a group called Centrozone. Okay. And, um, and we, uh, we figured out that we really liked working with each other. And so, so we started a business together, which was like a, the graphic designer. He was a, he's a graphic designer. I'm the psychologist. And basically what happened is that we, we had this uh, uh, advertisement agency. You know, that, okay. was, that, that was kind of what, 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 what happened because we wanted to make enough money to be able to make our art, which was music, mm -hmm. right? So we became our, our own uh, patrons, basically. That was kind of like the whole idea. And that was when I stopped working as a trainer, as a coach. Okay. Yeah. And, um, but the funny thing was that a big part of uh, my role in the uh, advertising business, again, was the psychologist. So when we had presentations for a logo or whatever, like I, I used my, my knowledge uh, about psychology Okay. to sell to sell uh the logos you know to yep, the client sure yeah so, and 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 so it was like it never it never really um went away for me and and i i had a um i also um was a lecturer at a university for a few years in, uh, in 2003 to 2006 or something i can't remember now um so i've i've always been connected um to that but really the the big change for me uh, which happened even before i joined stickman which was in late 2010 um was that i started composing music based on um some principles that i had learned and studied in hypnotherapy really wow yeah. interesting yeah so a lot of a lot of the music that some of the music that you may know uh of mine you know is uh, is music that is based on the idea of um putting putting the listener into a trance and into into like a into like a, a trance where something something positive can happen you know where 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 you kind of like open up for uh, for change let's say you okay know? And, and and the like the, just a simple way to explain this concept is that like the each musical event or like the each musical event needs to have equal parts of familiarity and surprise mm -hmm. okay that's like kind of my, my concept yeah so it, it always needs to have both so that it kind of draws people in wow that's and, yeah that's pretty cool. Yeah, and there is this uh, orchestral piece called Todd Morton 513, which I uh, wrote based on this principle. And, and that was kind of like the turning point in my career, writing this piece. And uh, yeah. Was that recorded in, uh, was there something you did in Denver? Before? Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. that's, that's the piece, yeah. I am yeah. familiar with that. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. So, then how did um i'm just curious how did stickman come along how did you um, get into the uh how did that evolve into you being a, are you an original member and forgive me for not knowing because no. it's the three of you right is has always been stickman is that no, there was there was uh, there was M michael bernier was in the band before me and he oh, was okay. in the band for, for one and a half or two years i can't okay. really tell exactly but it was only a relatively short time all right and he uh, he kind of dropped out because um, of, of his children or something. I can't. I don't really know why. Um, and I had already, you know, the story goes back. I had worked. I had been a student at one of Robert Fripp's guitar craft courses in the early nineties. Sorry. So I always had like some connection. And and I mean, I love Tony Stick playing. And you know, so I was like early on when I was like 18, I already felt like I'm part of the family somehow. But sure. it took a long time um, at a Crimson show or after Crimson show in Munich in 2000, I met Pat. Okay. Um, I met Pat on the train actually, and Trey Gunn was also there. And uh, oh, yeah. Pat and I became friends. We exchanged some CDs, and um, and I helped Pat with with his website for a while. And in 2005, Pat invited me over to Texas, to Texas, to Austin, Texas, where he lives, and oh, yeah. uh, we worked on our first record together, which is the Tuner Totem. Oh, and, okay. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. And so that was, so I was already kind of like connected with Pat. And I remember I was at Pat's place when Pat worked on Tony Levin's Stick Man album, which was a solo album that Tony okay. had. So I was there basically when that idea started. Oh. Um, and, and at that point, Tony had already found Michael to be in the band. So that was like, then Pat couldn't bring me in. Mm-hmm. And, and so it was just like for him, it was super organic, organic to ask me once Michael had left. And I, I slept on it because I, I just didn't, you know, he asked me, it was the evening, I remember, I slept on it. And next morning I said, yes, I'm going to do it. I'd love to do it. Mm-hmm. So, and and obviously, like, uh, when you, that's not all you do. You just, you also need to meet in person and see, like, how's the chemistry and does this work? Sure. And, and yeah, it worked very well. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great band. I in so many ways though because of uh well i've seen you a few times and, and the first time was with when i was with malcolm moore um yeah 2012 i think right or 2011 yeah. even it was one of those two yeah, yeah. and yeah. then a few times since then um yeah. there was one show here at the westcott theater in syracuse it was uh adrian Ballou's band played with yeah. uh, uh julie and uh Tobias, Tobias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I had it. never seen Adrian Ballou, and I always wanted to, so that was actually just fantastic. Really enjoyed that show. I think at the end, all of you played. Exactly. Yeah. Played that was, that the was the birth. That was the birth of the Crimson Project. Okay, so that was. I'm uh, pretty sure that was in 2012. No, it was 11. It 11. Was 2011. Yeah, it was uh, September, October. Yes, it was. It was definitely in the fall. Yes. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that was really cool. Um, so, I think, uh, well, the other thing, too, this is just a side note, is I remember uh, the last time I saw you three, four years ago at the Lost Horizon, um, mm-hmm. and any time I've seen Stick Men before, is you're all so friendly. I mean, you all come out and you're just hanging out and you're actually talking with people who are there to see you. And I, I don't see a lot of uh, musicians doing that, and and some are very highly inaccessible for whatever reason. Whatever reason, it's fun. It's not. I mean, it's fine. It's not like it's wrong or bad. It's just, I think, as a as a fan, mm-hmm. as a uh, someone who really appreciates each person in the group and the group collectively, it's so cool. You're out there talking. Tony's there. Pat was somewhere and, and you know, I remember at uh, Water Street Music Hall, Pat helped me load my drums in and load them out. It's like, you didn't have to do that. So, oh, it's fine, man, you know. So what? Okay, thank you. <laughs> no, uh, an, an American friend of mine um, told me a few weeks ago that he thinks that I'm too friendly to be paid $600 per hour. <laughs> <laughs> I love that man that's great <laughs> but again that was kind of like what I really think so like the American perspective um, that you can only be an authority when you're not friendly <laughs> somehow, somehow somehow here in Europe I, I experience that differently mm-hmm. like, like the pr- 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 being professional also means that you take everybody else seriously and that you that you kind of radiate um something good let's say yeah mm-hmm. uh, anyway but this is this is this is funny yeah we hang out after the shows and we love doing that and uh it's 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 part of it's part of uh what makes what makes um being in that band so great because yeah. just like we can play the most outrageous music for our audience they don't demand us to inter- entertain them mm-hmm. and the fact that we are free to do what we want is actually what entertains them you could say and, I feel, and, oh and, i know that i feel that way yeah you can see it hear it feel it very much yeah yeah and that's that's just like a a, a dream position to be in and and i think it's it's really uh uh, thanks to Tony being being around for such a long time, you know, because like even if we play in a small 
a small village in Germany or in Italy, th there's still 80 people who show up, you know? Yeah. So, so yeah. it's, 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 it's kind of like a gift I'm, and I'm extremely um, uh, grateful. And actually, um, this may interest you, I'm actually working on, on producing a new Stickman uh, live disc actually wow. from the show in Japan that we played. The last oh, cool. the and the last show we played. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I have to say, when, when you're in a band and you play, you're always like super, you know about this, you're always super critical and like, oh no, it wasn't good. Or something. But now like diving into the recording and just, just, just hearing the energy and it almost, to me, it, it doesn't even sound like it's me playing somehow. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. like I can totally dissociate from that and just enjoy the music. And that's, that's really uh, maybe also some sort of, um, at least in my case, some sort of secret why, why I can kind of put out quality music, uh, like almost a constant stream of quality music, because I have, I have the skill to distance myself. And, That's and good. Actually, yeah. You know. um, so I'm curious. Um, well, first of all, that's good news to hear. Do you have any approximate uh, uh, time frame for releasing that? Yeah, I mean, this this will be a special uh, special thing that Leonardo does, and I think oh, it will good. be three three discs or something of okay. um, Stickman and uh, and uh, another new album of mine and some other things. And, and that he's going to bundle up, and I'm sure it's going to go up for pre-order in, in a few weeks, maybe oh, at the end of May. Yeah, I just was talking with him last night. Um, so I'm just going to send you money next week and just lay a bunch of stuff on me. I need new music. <laughs> so I want to make sure that he includes this. But um, so if, you know, I'm curious. Now, now I just want to interject this while I think of it. Yeah. If for people uh, watching and listening, they want to learn more about you, uh, purchase your music. Where is the best place for them to go to do this? There's there's a website called Bandcamp, which is okay. kind of like a, a service that I use to sell my music. Okay. And on Bandcamp, just just look for Marcus Reuter. Okay. Marcus with a K, and and then you will find it. And Bandcamp is wonderful because it it pays you almost direct. They only take a small cut and it's, it is it's a good way. Yeah. And just, I mean, obviously like there's a YouTube channel where people can check out my music. I'm trying to put up like quality videos with uh, sample tracks from my albums and, um, and yeah, I mean, I have, I have a website that I have not been using much. So actually I'm, I'm thinking about um, making that uh, website more of a uh, professional, um, more of the psycholo psychologist side of things in the future. Oh, so cool. that's where I'm going to offer like coaching and stuff. Um, because like the music, the music thing is like mostly happening on social media. So websites don't really play a big role there anymore. Exactly. Um, you know, I, I have a web website from my workshop and education business, right? Yeah. Where mm -hmm. people can sign up and attend a workshop. Well, when we used to do them, we will mm -hmm. at some point again, but now they can sign up when we launch the online streaming workshops, they can do that. But they don't know about that unless I put it on social media, because who's going to go to my website? Nobody. Exactly. So then the social media will direct them to the site, you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And that seems to be, uh, well, it's a good thing. It's a great way. I mean, actually, we connected via Facebook um, yeah. quite a while back, but finally, uh, now that I'm unable to slow down, I'm really glad we could catch up and talk, because I'm because I'm a I'm a Marcus fan. <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting because Facebook is is kind of, I think it's basically a really cool thing. Yeah. And I I I remember that like when we must have first met. I'm sure we've already uh, we became Facebook friends then. Yeah. And I I've always I I knew your name. I know your face. Uh, I, I couldn't remember where we met, um, but somehow, um, like even just three, four years ago, when I went through my friends list, for at least fifty percent of the people, I, I I knew who they were, where we met, what they told me, and it's kind of it's kind of an interesting experiment where where now you know people have many more um, 
direct connections, really. Even though it's even though it's indirect because it's like a digital connection, okay. But still, there is communication possible, and there's also a lot of um, communication possible that is kind of like uh, ex that exists under the surface. Let's say sure. stuff that you don't see, that you don't hear, and and like what I said, this example that my GoFundMe campaign, um, you know, gave me a lot of money to to work with in this in this time yes uh, and 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 it's it's incredible you know there's 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 just so much um, um new there's so many new things to learn for us human beings still um in this digital age and mm -hmm. i think it's not it's not all bad you know there's there's quite a quite a lot of positivity about it i think so i mean you know I, people who know me know that i tend to be the consummate optimist it's a choice that i make yeah i try to be real you know i don't want to be delusional or anything but yeah a lot of times uh you know with as as human beings and granted very much so this is easier said than done many times but choosing our thoughts choosing a lot of things the choices are they can be life-changing they can change your day, change your hour, change your, things can change quickly. Um, decisions are powerful, powerful things many times, you know, decisions. When, I, was, I wanted to ask you this actually, and I'll, I'll just briefly say a little bit about my experiences. I get along with most people and not too many people bother me. If anything, I probably give too much away of energy and things like that. But in this time of COVID, where we're forced into a shutdown, um, you know, when I stopped traveling, I started working at Syracuse University. They recruited me back, and I'm grateful. But I'm not there because they're not open. Mm -hmm. um, however, I did notice quickly <laughs> when certain people would text me or email, and I felt physical energy drain. Mm -hmm. I had to sit back and, and think, I wonder if it's, can I change the situation where I don't feel drained or should I just distance myself and maybe refer them to somebody else to work with? So I've done each of those things. Um, and it's really helped me to um, stay more in the positive mode. Um, yeah. and, and not that I would go down a negative path, but I feel more rested. I feel more energized because I'm making choices on who to spend time with. It's just, yeah. I think it's an energy thing. It's not like I'm better than them or, you know, they're, it's not anything like that. It's just, a, I, I give too much away. So with that said, that's my experience so far with COVID is uh, reassessing a lot of things. How has yeah. this affected you? Because you've been traveling so much. And I know now, as you mentioned earlier, you're getting into kind of a, a groundhog day. I like how you use that, a routine <laughs> oh, overall. Um, how are you affected by this? How, how are you feeling and how's life going? What realizations are you uh, coming upon, if any? You know, I'm, I'm an optimist just like you. <laughs> and, uh, and for me, it's been, it's been a very good thing. I mean, the, I have a young daughter. She's only seven months old. Oh, wow. Congratulations. So, so I, get to, I get to experience her first year or uh, more yeah and i'm i'm at home right i yeah. it's it's really it's like a 24 7 thing and you could say oh well that's too much or um i mean currently um you know they are out so i you know but but it's just it's just incredible to to have this opportunity to see her grow up if i had to go to work or had to go on tours I, I, I would have been away this year at least four months out of the year, at least. And, and, and so this is kind of like very positive for me. Um, then there is, uh, this is something that like everybody who, who tours regularly can confirm, is a lot of, a lot of uh, um, important things you cannot really do because like if you're if you're traveling for three weeks and you're at home for two weeks or even at home for three weeks or for four weeks maybe you recover from the tour after 
a week or something or two weeks for some people at the beginning it took me a long time to recover from a tour and so really what happens is that the time between tours is usually dead so even something like submitting uh, uh, recordings to the performance rights society <laughs> like something stupid stuff like that gets yeah. extremely tedious yeah yeah so there's always this whole there's a little bit of a depression after these 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 uh strenuous uh travels and 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 it's it's really um for me it's a little bit like because like my my touring life really only started in 2011 and i was i was already 37 or something right so um, so it, it was relatively late in life. So I know what it is like to be at home. You know, like for people like Pat and Tony who've traveled all their life, it must be, must be hell, really. No. <laughs> but, but for me, it's kind of like going back to my older self somehow. And, and it, it helps me to tidy my life up. To, 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 uh, it's sort of like a, a spring cleaning in, in the biggest sense. Yeah. Sure. And, and and that's why I have to say I'm 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 doing pretty well, yeah. And um, I'm really glad. Yeah. So uh, I have not. I'm not. I'm not the uh, the kind of guy who uh, who gets into panic mode. Mm -hmm. And e even though there will be a big challenge uh, of trying to find a new uh, new work, whatever that means, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not that concerned yet. I think I'll like you said, like I'm trying to go with the flow here as well. And, yeah. and I believe that uh, opportunities will start presenting themselves. And I've, I've, I've noticed that, I mean, we're doing this, this thing here now that's going to be shown on the internet, but like, you know, a lot of people have started playing live shows, streaming and, 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 but this, this is kind of like uh, an act of uh, desperation sometimes which in which i don't want to get into i don't want to get into the come to the position where i do something out of desperation if you know what i mean yeah yeah and, and i do i do yeah. and so so i'm so i'm i'm really i'm really um taking my time to develop uh a vision for what i can do i'm also i'm I, just like you I, I i do want to use um and I, i've used um um skype for many many years to teach people so it's nothing new for me but if i have to say if i take the step and, and and take a next step in that direction i want to do something that is that is something that's not it's not about being different or new but it's it's something that needs to uh resonate with me and so just just starting to stream uh shows like solo stuff or something it's not it's not a solution for me I think for me, it's going into the direction of having like a combination of like a motivational talk or a discussion or um, uh, like a lecture combined with music. Yeah. You know? So, so something that I, uh, I would do in a, in a real world uh, a seminar, let's say, sure. you know, that's kind of more what I'm interested in. And in order to set something like that up, I'm actually, not kind of waiting, but I'm, I'm, I think that the, that, that vision and that the form for that is going to come. It's not something that I can force right now. You know, it's interesting. It makes me think of a friend of mine uh, who actually knows Tony pretty well. Uh, Dave Castiglione mm -hmm. is a saxophonist. Do you know Dave? I know the name. Yeah. Okay. I must have met him. We met, um, well, absolutely. He was at the show three, four years ago at the Lost Horizon, um, mm -hmm. mostly talking with Tony, but um, so we were, you know, hanging out, but we, we met over 30 years ago before he moved down to New York City and then I didn't see him for a long time. He came back and I went to his house. This is probably 11 or 12 years ago when and it was just, mm -hmm tenor sax and drums on drumming and he's on sax just complete improvisation and after about an hour he said so this is actually was my most important musical lesson of my life and it wasn't meant to be a lesson but it ended up being the best one ever and uh, I'm going to tie this back in with the statement you made about coming from desperation um, 
He said, yeah, it sounds good, man. We're sitting on the front porch because he and Tony and I all love espresso. Mm-hmm. I remember being at Tony's house in Kingston with Malcolm Moore, and the first thing is we sat down and Tony made express, espresso. It was so much fun. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm there, we're drinking espresso, and he says, he says, well, when you when you play what you do, like, what do you mean? So I had no idea what he meant by that. He said, well, you got some great licks and, you know, some chops here and there, but you're just doing licks. So is there, have you ever thought about the intention? He said it in a really nice way, too. It's like, think about the intention behind each thing, that each note you play, each phrase you play. What's the intention and what do you want people to get out of it? Imagine an audience is there or we're recording. And I, you know what? It changed everything for me. It completely changed everything because I was actually, because I was a little intimidated by him because of his immense talent and knowledge, I was a little desperate to hopefully not necessarily impress him, but more so not disappoint him. So my licks came out and it actually disappointed him. So he taught me though, and and this is another thing too, as I have found out of desperation is when I play my worst. Yeah. Desperation is probably only happened a few times in my life. And it's a gig that I had to do because I needed the money, let's say. Mm-hmm. And I sucked. It was horrible. Mm-hmm. And then I had other gigs that paid something like just a nominal like thirty dollars that were like the it's like a university with this one little trio I used to play with sax b3 and me thirty dollars mm-hmm. and a couple of free drinks <laughs> now that was that was really cool it wasn't about the money it was about the experience yeah. and yeah i i see this too and you know it's not again no judgment no not wrong not bad but for people who are doing it who live streaming cool if it works for them. But I love like what you're saying is how you're going to uh, figure out what it is you want to deliver and then go down that path. It's going to be a way better experience for you. Yeah. And, and, and really it's, you know, the, the album music of our times, what Leonardo says is, is that we kind of uh, reinvented the wheel. That's what he says, like, okay, we, the, the tour is canceled, so let's reinvent the wheel. That's what kind of like what he, how he sees this, kind of, okay, there's a challenge, so let's, let's take the, uh, you know, turn the disadvantage into an advantage. Yeah. And, and, and that's kind of like how I, how I um, look at things, but this, this act of like turning things to an advantage, there's, there's, there's one way of doing it, and there's another way of doing it. Yeah. And it, to me, it's important, and, and your your examples are perfect for that. That the the motivation or intention, the word that you used here, motivation and intention is that's key. It's key. Like if your if your in, intention and motivation are pure, let's say, there's nothing wrong with doing a live stream of your performance. Exactly. Yes. And 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 and. and but for me, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be it wouldn't be authentic, and it's it's and you know and 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 so so like this 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 whole process of 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 moving forward in in time, let's say, yeah, or moving forward in the present. Actually, that's how I would rather call it. Mm-hmm. Is uh, is that's kind of like the uh, the the. Um, that's the art of living somehow, you know? I love how you just said that, the art of the present, because we're here and it's now, and that's this is what we have. And it sounds so cliche because people say it all the time, but it's true. Yeah, it is true. This is what we have. We don't have 10 minutes ago. We don't have 10 minutes from now. We have now. It's okay you to think that. ahead, of course, but being here is so important now, you know? You know, there is, uh, I, I hardly ever, or I really don't post anything, anything personal on social media. Sometimes I do, but it's, it's like, sometimes it's like a little bit calculated even. So I would, I, but I would never really post a, a, 
a rant or criticism publicly, really. Um, but I was thinking, like, seeing some of the uh, people make about the current situation is like where I'm, 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 this response comes, and I don't, I don't ever write it or say it. I'm going to say it now. But one response is like, there is no future. Like, don't, don't even think about the future. There is no future. It doesn't, it doesn't even exist because it's always here. The future is now somehow. I don't know. This is must, somebody else must have said that many times. But, but this is, this is really how I feel about this. And, and that's also why I feel I don't, don't feel any panic yet. You know? And I, I'm not even anxious. You know, I've, I'm, I'm getting there. I, I wasn't panicked at all. Mm-hmm. And then I made the mistake of watching the news too mo- too often and find, yeah. you know, hearing what yeah. our fearless leader has to say about things. And that's a, mm-hmm. that's not a good discussion because it's just not. And I'm coming down now. I was very anxious for a while, but it just had to do with the ignorance, in my opinion, the ignorance going on in the in the government. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I think a lot of people feel that way, but I hate to say it, there's probably nothing I can do for that. So what I can do is talk with you, learn, <laughs> talk with Leonardo. He always teaches me things. Uh, enrich my life instead of worrying about stuff that I just can't control, you know? Oh, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly what, what I would say. I mean, this, I have to, I really have to, I was, I was there when your current president was uh, elected. I was in the U S I, I, you know, I spent a lot of time in the U S and I love the U S I love the people. And, and it's, it's, uh, you know, very dear to me. But I have to say that the, uh, the 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 reaction towards the president is giving him power, and it just doesn't stop. People don't stop feeding, and and you know, like what what you what you're saying is exactly like what you can do is you can be the the good person in your environment. For the people that you're close to, and 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 this 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 act of of uh, let's just call it love. Why not? Yeah, is what will spread out. Yeah, it will spread out. And anything anything like negative or hateful um, will feed that side that you that you're fighting. And and that's and that's why why the the, the this kind of conversation is important. You know this this this, this uh, uh, goodwill when you meet a new person that you've never talked to, and this openness. And this is something that I have always felt uh, to be Americans to be very good at, actually. And so I'm a little bit surprised that uh, that there's been so much on both sides, right? Like like negativity that's like feeding that system. Yeah, it's a, actually an interesting observation. I hadn't thought about the the power aspect that he may gain from the negativity, because there's plenty of it. It's been a very divided nation since before the election. Um, but you know, I was talking with a friend of mine in London last two weeks ago, Dan Edwards. Who are you familiar with? Um, parkour was kind of like a um, parkour athletes there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, so he has a, uh, he started a thing called Parkour Generations many years ago, and he's a, uh, beautiful to watch him and his clients, students move up mm-hmm. and down the sides of buildings and f- jumping over things and from one thing to another. Really cool guy. He was saying, uh, which helped ground me a little bit when I, I needed it. He didn't know I needed it, but thank you, Dan, I did. <laughs> Is it, you know, right now, the best thing we can do is uh, control what we can and enrich our lives somehow the best that we can. And and that really had a profound f- effect on what I, how I thought about this whole situation, because I was into the future thinking about and worrying about things um, to a degree, not, not paranoid by any means, but 
not relaxed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming down. I'm coming down. And it's been a good process. It's been a good process to slow down and reassess and think and realize what it is I can do, what I can do that's good. Who can I help? You know, when I say enrich my life, it's not about me. Yet when I learn more from a conversation with you about just perspective, life, Leonardo is another one. I can talk with him and I'll get different uh, I learn. And so now I can be something better for somebody else. And that's what it all boils down to. It's not like, oh, I just want to you know, be self-indulgent. No, I want to be more so I can be more for other people. Because a lot of people are struggling. And it may not be COVID. It could be Parkinson's. It could be cancer. It could be heart problems. I have a friend of mine who had a heart transplant, liver transplant, and now she has breast cancer. You know, there's somebody who's dealing with some real shit, you know? I got nothing. So yeah, exactly. what really matters, right? Yeah. Yeah. That you know, there's this this concept of uh, cognitive dissonance mm -hmm. that maybe um, you can look that up. But what happens is that even if we have if we've made a mistake, rather than just saying we've made a mistake, we try to justify the mistake yes and when i mean it's like a like a not a good thought for example yeah yeah and i've been there i've done that yeah oh we i mean we all have yeah and or we all do have these thoughts and and try to justify them and this is this this is really the the you know the That's that, that's like kind of like the the keyhole and 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 like you need these two these two things need to come together to unlock this this vicious circle of of having uh, having a thought that's let's just say impure or crazy or whatever you could say or uh, not based in reality and. And what happens is that, like, if if you if if you don't find a way out of it, it just drags you to one side of the spectrum, and you may go really crazy. Yeah. You know? and, and 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 this is this is why it's so important with with uh, mental health that we uh, support each other. And I don't mean even not even actively, you know, not directly, but. Mm -hmm. But by 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 contributing uh, like positivity into the world, we help we help people not slide over to that one side of the spectrum. And and uh, and that, I think that's also like coming back to the music. That's also something that I that I hope um, some of my music does for people. You know, it yeah, just well, balance I, something. You know, I know it does for me very much so and i'm sure it does for others because you have a you have a following out there my friend it's great yeah. you're so in what? through your music you're actually able to help people and you've been doing it for years oh, it's and wonderful people wonderful people that like my music it's incredible i mean it's it's like uh what? I, I have for a long time for a long time I haven't used the word fan mm -hmm. because I think it's 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 uh, inappropriate because I find the people that connect with me via my music they are by definition my friends. I I can understand that yes yeah I think that's great. Um, I I do have a question before I forget though before we you know before we. Yeah. Um, end is uh look moving forward and i know right now at times are, we're in uncertain times so you know tours you know when will a tour happen that nobody knows anything right now but um are there tours that you're planning on doing let's see maybe next year or uh you hopefully back out with stick men uh, and recordings, any recordings coming up that you're going to be working on, music or projects you'll be putting out there, where we can be look on the lookout for. So, so there are there are plans for touring um, way into the next year. 
it's like a year from now or so right yeah so so I it's really um i personally don't believe that anything will happen this year for me this is kind of like or let's just i mean i don't want to say i believe that but it's just something that i'm kind of preparing myself for yeah and so uh, there would have there, there there may be or would have been or whatever a tour uh, with stickman in the us in the summer and and a european tour in uh, in november and uh, then the japanese shows uh, are res uh, were rescheduled already for next year january Okay. And so, so there is there is the the plan and things kind of get rescheduled and stuff but but right now i don't think uh, any of that i can i cannot really count of that to happen so yes um um what i'm kind of like doing right now is i'm i'm finishing projects that have accumulated over the years and okay. and, and working on something like the, the stickman life in nagoya record for example oh, good. And since I, I will be finished with that uh, this weekend, actually, and so next 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 week, uh, Pat, Tony, and I, Stickman, we're going to get together on Zoom also, <laughs> like mm -hmm. this, and we'll start um, talking uh, about and making a plan for making a new record. Oh, good. And, and I think I think it couldn't be, even though it's such a, it, it you know we would never have had the time to actually make a record with time sure. <laughs> and, yeah. and so it's going to be i think it's going to be great and it's going to be something that is potentially bigger than what we've done before and when i say bigger i mean like more meaningful mm -hmm. to us uh, like most of the records we've done so far they were made in a hurry or just in you know, like really not the best circumstances and now even though we're not in the same place I think we can we we have this this con strong connection with each other, and we will we will be writing great material, and That's then great. we'll see if if we're making the recordings at a distance or if we then when things change get together in a studio to record or we'll we'll see, but yeah that's that's kind of like my um, the, the the one musical activity I'm really looking forward to most. Well, wow, that's great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing it too. That'd be great. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I've um, I've really, really enjoyed talking with you. And, and before I end the recording, um, just a couple things. I'll end it, but please hang out with me for just a minute afterwards. Just wanted yeah. to ask you a couple of questions, and then anything at all, um, anything additional you you'd want to say. A lot of times, a question that I ask is if you have any rec uh, advice, words of wisdom, or a takeaway message on whatever it could be, anything, life, music, anything. I, I have plenty, plenty of those things to say, but I'm, I'm not interested in doing that right now. Like the, the only information I want to pass out there for anybody who, who sits through this long uh, conversation, <laughs> me, me uh, rambling, uh, is that, um, when you when you feel the need to con contact me, do it. I love it. That's great. That's perfect. And they can do that through. What's the best social way? media or email info at marcusreuter dot com. Um, okay. It's, okay, it's easy, easy to find. But always don't don't hesitate to get in touch. It's it's really I have to say the. Uh, um, the world has the tendency or the air let's say has the tendency to uh bend things out of shape so maybe what you're what you're hearing or what you're seeing or what you're experiencing when you're listening to my work or when you hear me talk or when you uh read about me may not actually give you give you a correct image maybe we need to interact for real and and yeah. and so I, I find that if there's some sort of attraction, and I, I try to um, follow this rule myself, if I feel it an attraction to a person, even if that attraction is negative, if I have a not a good feeling, mm -hmm. I try to kind of make contact to to find out what that attraction is about, mm -hmm. I, because I think it's 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 the like the most valuable. Um, 
again i don't know how to call it even like 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 signs you know like we get signs all the time and right. i think we need to follow up on them and and something like attraction or like being interested and and you should never hesitate to actually go and and that 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 person that you like so much you know go there and try to make contact you know it's it's important it's important interesting you know i just was um just last night I was talking about this with uh, a friend of mine and I think I think maybe Leonardo and I talked also for a minute about this mm -hmm. if you don't ask you won't <laughs> yeah. get yeah mm -hmm. and then actually last night I got a call from a gentleman who was you know at one point in my life one of my main drum influences I sent mm -hmm. him an email ask him if you consider a conversation mm -hmm. i never expected to get a response and he called me mm -hmm. it's like wow mm -hmm. this was i mean we had a great conversation for like 20 minutes 25 minutes and it was great i i just i never expected that but if i didn't ask that call never would have happened we wouldn't have spoken and if i didn't ask you we wouldn't be talking and you're all important people to me because you know we may have never spoken before other than hi and nice to meet you and nice show at water street music hall <laughs> but i always felt sometimes you can feel a connection even if you've never really met somebody so it's it's uh asking is the first step <laughs> and and you, you know it, it it really opens up and it creates a new universe oh yes and this is this is it may sound ridiculous to some people but it does literally open up a new universe yes yeah. some some call it opportunity okay if that's like the the technical or the business term in a way yeah mm -hmm. but but really it opens it it just opens the door to a new world meeting new people going going forward and 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 getting over the uh inhibitions let's say to uh yeah. to make contact and and that's that's what really 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 the, the one piece of advice that basically i i'm giving myself but like <laughs> but i'm but i'm saying it loudly you know and i think it's really important and that's an important uh revelation i had not that long ago a few years ago um i can't find what uh, something i was looking for but i can just describe it so i uh i started doing interviews with doctors and movement specialists seven years ago in july and it was solely so that i could get in front of them and learn and then mm -hmm. share because mm -hmm. i figured well you know i can't ask dr so-and-so out to coffee they don't have time for that but if i say would you be a guest on my interview series and yes i will admit 100 percent there was self-indulgency here but it was also because i don't believe education should be hoarded and knowledge should be shared yes. so i would get the knowledge thank you deliver it on youtube or wherever well gee this led to so many opportunities and it led to me teaching for a company out in new york city that not then i ended up going to england for the first time a few years ago and then my own program the parkinson's program i teach was born from all of these connections and it has completely changed my life not necessarily the interviews themselves although that was my vehicle to connect but the connections the the relationships the friendships that have been built which i'm grateful for and the opportunities i'll use that word because opportunities were created yeah but also within that came the opportunity to help people you know, through education and disease management and this, I'm going to send you something today, by the way, I'll make sure I don't forget for your friend, yes. uh, your student. So yeah, that's so important. The universe, each relationship is like a separate universe in, in and of itself. Exactly. And what's possible within certain relationships uh, could be completely different here and here, but enormous possibilities of, uh, if nothing else, just learning more. <laughs> well listen man this has been a lot of uh fun i'd love to do this again sometime down the road 
Sure. Not too far down the road. Like maybe, maybe we can strategize it with the release of something that's coming up. So we'll stay in touch on that. Yeah. Let's 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 meet again in a couple of weeks. <laughs> hey, that's cool with me. I, so we'll deem this right now. We'll deem this part one. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Conversation number one. Listen, hang on with me for a minute afterwards. But uh, just want to say thank you, Marcus. Really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you, Carl. And all that you're doing. And you're welcome for everybody who's uh, out there watching and listening. Thank you. Thank you. This this has been a. Uh, for me very enlightening and thought provoking so i'll be watching and listening to it so i can have to write some notes down <laughs> <laughs> but thanks everyone thank you marcus and um, have a great day thank you you too <laughs>